video games can't be movies. No, that's stupid. <laughs> They're video games, right? <sighs> yes, they can. At the beginning of the PlayStation 3's life cycle, there weren't many exclusives to be played on the system. To be honest, it made the Xbox 360 look halfway decent. Alright, alright, now is not the time or the place to talk about Xbox, I get it. Let's just... Let's just continue. I mean, the PS3 did have some okay games in the beginning. It had Resistance, Fall of Man, and Ratchet & Clank, Tools of Destruction, both absolutely fantastic games. You know, you know even considering they're both made by the same developer. And let's just forget how Layer turned out. Developer Naughty Dog then came out with an experience unlike anything they did in the past, and quite frankly, a game that no one's ever made before. Uncharted Drake's Fortune, simply put, is a cinematic masterpiece in video games. It's impeccable voice acting and cast of characters, mixed with gorgeous environments, interesting story, and a good gameplay mix of gunplay, climbing, and puzzles make for a game layout that still can't be copied today. Here we go. Uncharted is about the now iconic Nathan Drake, who is a descendant of the old privateer Sir Francis Drake, who coincidentally looks very similar to the Burger King. Nathan is on an adventure with news journalist Elena and his best friend Victor, Goddamn Sullivan, in the almighty land of South America to find the remains of Sir Francis. Well, history can't be wrong, you know. For example, you can't defile an empty coffin. However, when they open the coffin, Drake ain't in there. Only a journal that contains information on the lost city of El Dorado which admittedly is much more epic than finding a dead body. The three <laughs> then explore the rest of Aus America to pick up on the old man's trails, and thus, the adventure begins. Let me just say that the voice acting in this series is some of the best you'll find in any video game period. The god almighty Noah North as Nathan Drake is a match made to heaven, Another and the rest of the cast is up to par as well. Jeez, does he always go on like this? <laughs> As characters, they're all very well defined. Although Nate and Sully work together, they're both two completely different people. While Sully likes to get right to the point, he only cares about the money. All right, Nate, just pretend for a minute that I don't really care about any of that stuff and cut to the chase, would you? Nathan Drake is a happy-go-lucky adventurer that lets out some fantastic one-liners. Is the beautiful ladies' man we all wish we were. Ah, <sighs> strangers trying to kill me, leave my map on a burning plane. Plane is missing. Most likely dead. That's great. It's a great start, Nate. Now, when it comes to graphics, I don't think I need to say a word. However, I need to because I know there are those kids out there who will rant, It's not 1080p and it's not on PC and you can't mod it. It doesn't even look as good as Crisis. Just, just shut the f up. You have to consider the fact that this game came out in 2007. Oh, but the original Crisis came out in 2007, dude. Okay, I get it. I get it. But just look at it. The greens of the jungle feel tangible, the light through the trees looks very nice, and the facial animation is very well done, even if it looks a little cartoonish by today's standards. But it's not just about the graphics, but how you use them. The cutscenes feature cinematography previously only found in movies. More so than any other game I've played, Uncharted has very nice transition and balance between cutscene and gameplay. The game never feels like it's taking over from the experience. The only problem I have with the presentation is that there are a couple of parts where when you turn the camera, the screen tears. A lot. Like, it hurts to look at it sometimes, you know, I find it very complicated to stare at the TV without blinking freaking ten times a second. But other than that, 
It's near perfect. Oh, and let's not forget that soundtrack. Composed by Greg Edmondson, a famous television and movie composer, not only does Uncharted have a very brilliant score, but it also contains one of the best theme songs in anything history. Now that's an achievement if I do say so myself. The gameplay in Uncharted is divided up into three different sections. Combat, climbing, puzzle solving. None of these aspects of the game is groundbreaking. What does surprise me is how fluently these gameplay mechanics fit together. It never feels like certain sections of the game are set for certain mechanics. For example, I never walked into a room and told myself, this is the climbing part, or this is the part where I'm going to shoot a lot of bad guys. They all fit so nicely together, you just feel like you're playing a game with so many organic elements to it, even considering that they are very own original gameplay mechanics. You can argue that Uncharted is a copy of Tomb Raider, the 3D Prince of Persia's, and even Gears of War. However, let's break down each aspect of the gameplay. Combat is very simple and straightforward, but that doesn't make it any less fun. It's a simple cover-based shooter that borrows its cover mechanic from Xbox's Gears of War. Click circle and you're in cover, switching from cover to cover seamless, stylish, and works very well. Cover is your friend, so you better use it to your advantage. You can equip two different weapons, a single-handed weapon like your handy dandy M9s as well as revolver Desert Eagle, blah 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 blah, and a two-handed weapon like a shotgun, different assault rifles, and sniper rifles. The game gives you enough ammo to set you on your way, but also enough where you have to scrounge up some extra ammunition from your bloody victims. There were many instances which I was running low on ammo and ultimately had to pick up a completely different weapon and switch up my playing style because of this. Now this is no means a bad thing at all. It keeps combat interesting and varied while keeping you on your toes and requiring you to improvise on the go. Grenades are at your disposal and are very effective in most situations. You aim your grenades by tilting your DualShock 3 controller using 6-axis control. And to my surprise, tilting to aim the grenades works surprisingly well, immersing yourself even further into the shoes of Nathan Drake. There's also a simple melee system which, you know, doesn't work very effectively. You simply mash the square button to kill your enemies, pressing triangle for the occasional counter. There's also a combo you can use to kill your enemies in style and receive extra ammo, but it's very hard to perform and it's ultimately useless. Now I do have a couple other complaints when it comes to the combat system. First, on later difficulties, enemies take way too many bullets. Four to six bullets in the chest won't kill a guy? Yeah, you could probably consider your enemies as an army of villains with superpowers. My other gripe is that the game can get very cheap. I mean, it gets frickin' ridiculous sometimes. There are a couple of levels where the enemies are mowing you down with gunfire, giving you frickin' no mercy. It's at these parts where the game feels very unfair, especially when it throws multiple ways of the same enemies in the same areas. It feels like unnecessary padding that could have easily been taken out. And then out of nowhere, it's like Naughty Dog decided to make a completely different game. The last quarter of the game has you fighting in a completely different style compared to how you were up until that point. Now I won't spoil this moment for you, but fans of the series are definitely going to agree with me when I say, I most certainly did not see that coming. And admit it, you were fucking terrified when it happened. Well screw combat, what about the rest of the game? Well the game's other main feature is in its traversal. Climbing old monuments and traversing through vines and rock ledges of the jungle is very simple and oh so satisfying. Click X to jump a climb. That's it. Compared to other games like Tomb Raider, it is so much easier to get to your destination without fumbling over the controls. What I'm most surprised about is how the designers made the levels in the game make it feel natural almost. They didn't look like places made for climbing. They looked like actual places where it was just possible to climb them. It's actually a false gimmick, but it becomes very satisfying looking around the area and finding that perfect vine that looks like it just happens to be in the right place for your own convenience. Every now and then you're tasked with solving some puzzles to continue your adventure. There are only a handful of puzzles throughout the game, but they're generally a breeze, considering your handy dandy notebook points you in the right direction. There is one puzzle late in the game that involved Roman numerals that I was really stumped on. And no, it's not because they're Roman numerals. I do understand the concept of these, don't worry. But even though I had a hard time with the puzzle, that by no means makes it unbeatable. It just, you know, took a minute to figure out. For like, you know, 15, 20. It took a while.
Nope, no multiplayer. Next! When it comes down to it, Uncharted Drake's Fortune, simply put, again, is one of the greatest examples of cinematography found in video games, period. Unlike any other titles out there, Uncharted doesn't forget that this is a game. And as a game, it may not be perfect, but as an experience, it's quite nothing like it. Until the sequel, intent, nudge nudge. The presentation of the whole in Uncharted is absolutely perfect on all fronts. The game has some of the most impeccable acting in video games, has a terrific score and one of the best themes found in the game, it contains a very solid gameplay foundation. Unfortunately, the game does contain some freaking frustrating levels that will, you know, break your controller and all that nonsense. The melee and hit count is, you know, a little off-putting, and the entire experience overall is a little shorter than you prefer. Now, should you buy Uncharted? Shit, yeah, you should. I mean, considering you could buy this game for around seven dollars, it's almost a no-brainer. If you haven't already played this, or if you're new to the PS3 and want to check out its great library of games, you have to most definitely start with this. Uncharted Drake's Fortune receives an 8.5 out of 10. Well, thank you for watching the first episode of Bathroom Gamer, and I hope eventually there will be more videos on the channel somewhere. Um, this is my first, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to us, see if there's anything else, comment suggestions, tell me what I did wrong, and if, you know, make your comments, you know, tell me I did bad or something. But whatever you do, you can't tell me that she's not adorable. Thank you very much.